I shared the before and after and the behind the scenes of this photo over on Instagram and folks are like, hold up, we need to see how you edited that <laughs> start to finish. So that's exactly what we're gonna do here today. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon, welcome to my studio. Like I said, we are going start to finish through this photo in terms of the edit, but I will give you a little flavor of the behind the scenes. Just for context, it was Saturday night, the kids wanted ice cream and I thought, well, I do need some ice cream photos for the new rebranded website that we're working on, thebiteshot.com, is getting a makeover. And so I thought, oh, this would be perfect for one of the photo shoots that I've got on the lineup. So before we jump into the edit, just to walk you through like the behind the scenes and my thought process, I'm shooting with the Nikon Z7, and then I'm working with a 105 millimeter f2.8 macro lens. Now, obviously in this situation, I'm not taking advantage of the macro capabilities, but for head-on shots, I really love using that longer focal length because of the way it compares presses the background and really brings the subject forward. If you're not familiar with sort of that phenomenon, it's the idea of the opposite of using a really wide angle lens, like a fisheye where it really distorts on the edges. This is a longer lens, so it compresses, presses in on that background. Now, as far as the backdrop, this is one of the seamless vinyl backdrops, the pure white from Club Backdrops. They're one of my favorite vinyl backdrop companies. And then I've just got that hung up on the boom arm of a C stand with some A clamps, A clamps holding the world together. And then in terms of the lighting, I have the Flashpoint AD600 Pro, no reflector, it's just the bare bulb, but then it's behind the four foot by four foot Westcott Scrimgem Cineframe with quarter stop diffusion, which is pretty thin diffusion material. So it really creates sort of like that hard light look without being too harsh. But I thought this lighting scenario would work just so well for this subject because of just the texture that I really wanted to show off in that ice cream and to like catch the specular highlights on the drips, which mission accomplished. But now let's jump into the edit. And just like I am most times here in the studio, I was working tethered to Capture One. So that is where we are gonna start for our edit. So now if this is your very first time inside of Capture One, I'm gonna recommend you go check out my previous video on getting started in Capture One. Admittedly, this may look overwhelming if this is your first time, and I'm gonna just dive right on into the edit. So go check out that video, it's linked down below, and then once you feel confident enough to navigate around in what we're talking about here, then come on back and let's jump into the edit. So you can see I took a number of shots to get to that final one. We had my test shots where I had my hands, and then we brought in the kids and here's Calvin with his single scoop and double scoop, but he admittedly got bored and really wanted to eat the ice cream. So I dismissed him and brought in the pro, Blaze. <laughs> he's been doing this ever since he was itty bitty and he's 11 now. So he's a seasoned pro at this point. But we've got the triple scoop. One little fun footnote is I use a toothpick in order to create some stability here. So I put that first scoop on, put in a toothpick, put on the next scoop, put in another toothpick, and then the top scoop. And it just really helped to anchor them and hold them in place. And they did a great job. Blaze all also did a really great job of really like holding on to everything. So now we're gonna go ahead and just see which is the version I like the best. I sorta of do love this little drip moment right here. That's pretty good. But actually I kinda like it once it's sort of like gone, just so we've got a little bit more drippiness factor. I also like the way his hand, you can see how I directed him. He was a little further down to start and I just had him kinda come up a little further on it. And I also like the unevenness of the fingers. Whereas you can see, it's a little bit more of like a straight grip here, which I, I like that too, but there's something about this grip that I personally like. So let's see which one do I like the best. I think that's the one I'm gonna go for. So now I'm gonna start off with the white balance. And again, if you remember, this was a white background. So I'm just gonna pick up the eyedropper and that just doesn't quite feel right. That feels a little too warm. We're at 6,400. I've got a 5,600 Kelvin light. So that definitely feels a little too warm. I'm gonna take this down to 5,900. That feels a little bit more accurate. Now in terms of this background, I'm really not too worried about the color of the background at this point, or even the way that the background ground looks because I'm going to cut that out and replace it in Photoshop. So it's really just all about does the ice cream cone look accurate here? And I'm liking the direction. I'm liking where we're at at this point. 
So now let's go ahead and affect the rest of the changes. The thing that I'm first off the bat really noticing is that I really want to just add some contrast to this equation. It does feel a little bit flat. If we look at our histogram, everything is mostly living in this direction right here. So our opportunity is to add a bit more of kind of those darker tones down here. So I am going to increase the exposure just a little touch just to bring it up and then let's look. I'm going to come down here into the levels area. This is one of my first places that I like to start to just add some depth to a scenario. So this is where I can take this middle slider and just kind of bring it out here to the right. You see how that suddenly inches things in? That's affecting those midtones on our histogram to really like darken them. You can even see the histogram up at the top and how it's changing and how it's kind of skewing darker and it's spreading out a bit more. So I'm just going to add that little bit of spread there to kind of deepen that. Then I'm going to come into the tone curve and I'm going to just bring up the highlights just a little bit, not too far, but then I'm going to bring in the shadows. This is what we call that S curve, right? Because we're creating sort of an S, although this is a pretty flat S. <laughs> I know I don't want to get too wild with this. You can see that just makes it a little too dramatic. That's not quite what I'm going for here. I'm going for kind of poppy and summery and fun. So just bring that in just ever so slightly. Okay, now we've got some really nice depth going on here. I've got a little bit of contrast and I'm digging that. Okay, I'm gonna worry about the colors later. I do want to add some saturation to our scoops. But you can see if I come back up here into the saturation and I start to bring that off to the right. Well, okay, now I like the way that the scoops look, but the hand and the cone itself, we're looking a little too, like we're going to Oompa Loompa land and we don't want that. So I'm just going to take that up to maybe about a four, just a little touch, but I'm going to handle those scoops separately with the layers in just a moment. So now moving on into the clarity slider. And admittedly, I like the way that Capture One handles clarity. It does feel very different to me in comparison to how it works in Lightroom. Inside of Lightroom, I really don't use the clarity slider much because it just always feels a little too muddy. Whereas here in Capture One, I have four different styles of clarity, which is kind of fun to play with. And you can see natural is where I'm at right now. I personally gravitate more toward natural and punch. But here in natural, if I just slide that off to the right you see how that just sort of cinches everything in creates that contrast really clears up to that lighting we had that harder lighting look and so that really helps to just accentuate that definition but now here's what's interesting is that was the natural style the natural method of clarity we can come in here and do the punch instead and it's that much more dramatic so i will use punch usually in situations like this where it's more of a minimal composition and i really want sort of that more graphic feel that more aggressive sort of punch to the situation but i'm going to tone that down just a little bit we don't want to get too too wild with it so again if i had that as natural versus not having it at all we turn it off and we turn it on just that ever so slightly. Okay, let's go a little bit. Let's go back to punch. There we go. You can see before and after. All right, so now at this point, our cone is looking pretty good. I am going to bring up the brightness just a little bit. This reminds me of if you're familiar with in Lightroom of the lights area where you have the tone curve area and you have those additional sliders. Brightness feels very similar. It doesn't affect the shadow areas in the way that, for example, if we brought up the exposure, that's bringing up all the tones. Whereas brightness, it's really only helping to brighten up those brighter areas of the image. And I like that. So bringing that up just ever so Slightly, and that looks that looks great. So now at this point, I want to add some saturation to those scoops. They're looking a little dull. I also want to just brighten up this little area of the hand right here because I don't want the hand to really pull focus. I want it to be all about those scoops. So we're going to utilize the layers panel here. I'm going to start out with one layer. Let's rename that to hand. And I'm going to pull up the brush and then we can make this brush smaller, bigger. I'm going to go ahead and take the hardness down. I just want this to be ever so slight. And I'm going to bring the flow down a whole lot too. And then I'm just going to paint in this little area. You see where it starts to turn red? That is where our mask is going to happen. And I'm just going to open up the shadows ever so slightly. Just bring those up a little bit. Bring up the exposure just a little bit. It's not a ton, but it's just enough. It's just a little, little something there to brighten things up. 
All right. So then our final edit here in Capture One before we take this over into Photoshop is I'm going to add one more layer to add some saturation to those scoops. So let's go ahead and right click, rename, scoops. Helps to just keep track of which layers are which. So then we still have the paintbrush here and I can change, I'm gonna go ahead and increase the flow on this just cause I really wanna lay that down. And you can make it again, larger or smaller. You can right click to change the size of the brush, but you can also use the shortcut keys, the left and right bracket. Left bracket makes it smaller, right bracket makes it bigger. So I wanna cover a good bit of area here all at once. And you can see that's definitely putting a nice layer on here. Again, I'm not too worried about it getting on the background either because we're going to be cutting that out. And I just want this on the scoops. I don't want it on the cone because the cone, I feel like, is sort of like the hand. If we end up in like super orange land, that's just distracting from, to me, what is the main star of the show, which is the actual sherbet. Sherbet, not sherbert, right? It's not like Herbert. Sherbert. <laughs> sherbet. <laughs> Very controversial topic on the internet. Almost as controversial as how you like your bacon. All right, now we've painted that in. And now I can come into the saturation slider and you can see I can, I mean, I can really dial that up. There we go, that's looking pretty good. And then I can even come down into the color editor and further adjust. I kinda want this, let's play around with the green going really green. Oh, I kinda like it more in that bluey green. And then if we come into the orange, I kind of want that to be a little bit more of a, I want it less yellow orange and more red orange. There we go. You can also play around with that. Ooh, yeah, I'm going to just bring down, bring down the lightness on that because that light is directly hitting onto that orange stripe. And so really to add just a little bit of lightness to bring that lightness down to darken it just a touch really helps to make it pop. And then if we come into the red, and you can see, we can really kind of take that down to really capture again some of that detail, that finer detail that's there. You see if I really bring this down, really helps to define it, but I don't want it to look too muddy. I want this to feel still bright and springy and light. And I kind of, I like the color that's going there. I mean, we could really take it more into the purpley pinks versus, no. No, we're not going Pepto-Bismol, right? <laughs> There we go. But I like that complement of colors. All right, so let's just look at those scoops before we added that in. See, ooh, so much different, right? So much more pop. Love the way that layers work here inside of Capture One. So now let's take it off over into Photoshop. If we right click on that image, edit with Adobe Photoshop, TIFF, uncompressed, edit variant, let's go. Very first place we want to start in Photoshop is to select our background and then hit Control or Command J to create an additional layer so that we can edit on this layer and that we are not touching our background so that if we ever need to go back to it, that we always still have that as sort of our safety element. Now all I really want to do at this point is cut out our subject by creating a selection around it so that I can then insert a separate background. We're going to be working with masks here. If you are brand new to Photoshop or you're not familiar with how masks work and the way that layers work, highly recommend checking out the playlist I have linked down below in the description box. That's going to be a good baseline to get you started. So then you can come on back and keep going in with this tutorial because I'm not going to necessarily get into the nitty gritty of how all these different functions and features work. So now what I'm going to do is create a selection around our subject. There's a lot of different ways to do this in Photoshop. The way I'm going to do it is by selecting the quick selection tool. You can see that I am highlighted here. Funny enough, they're using an ice cream cone as the illustration. So that's awesome. And what this is going to give me then is the option up here to select subject. And I'm actually going to go ahead and drop down with this little carrot to cloud. This is, I find, does just a little bit better job of getting really nitty gritty details selected. And so also though in this situation, we have a very clear separation of our subject from the background. So it's going to be fairly easy for Photoshop to automatically do this for us. But I've gone ahead again, selected that cloud, and then I hit select subject. And now Photoshop is going to create the selection around the hand, around the ice cream cone, hopefully do a good job so that I don't have too much extra work. And it did. It did a really wonderful job. But let's go ahead and just zoom in, make sure that it really did a great job capturing these nooks and crannies. And I can see there's just a little 
bit where it didn't quite get. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here into Select and Mask, hit that button, and you can see where the mask has been added that we can see the subject, but then all the things that are in pink will be removed. That is now being removed from our selection. So if I want to, you can see, for example, it didn't do quite a perfect job right here. So I'm just gonna come in. I have selected the brush tool and I just wanna add more of the mask in. So I'm just gonna reveal more of that ice cream cone in here. And you can go through and really get nitty gritty and refined on some of these details. But that's looking pretty good. And then I wanna get rid of just this little teeny tiny piece of the background. Again, just like in Capture One, we can make our brush larger or smaller by using the bracket keys. So I'm just adjusting down so that I can really fit into that area. And then I'm gonna select the negative so that I can then remove. See that I'm just really getting tight in there. There we go, a little bit more over in here as well. So you can really kind of spend some time though and get even more refined with those selections. But now we can see our subject is selected. The background is masked out. I'm gonna hit okay. And again, that is preserving then that selection. Now, what I wanna do is to create a mask. So all I'm gonna do is come down into this menu right here, add layer mask. And now we can see over here, you can see where it's black in the background and where it's white on the subject, white to reveal, black to conceal. So on this particular layer, all of the background is blacked out, whereas our subject is revealed. So now all we have to do in order to change the color of this background is to create an additional layer by hitting that plus sign. And then if I wanted to just make this a solid color, I could come up here into the color selector. And then if I hit the G key, which is the paint bucket tool, and then I am selected on that layer right there, and I just drop that in, and it has now painted that entire layer that color, which is great, but where's our subject, right? Well, all we have to do is drag this below that layer that we just did that selection, and voila, it is now covered up the white background, but because we have that layer mask there that has revealed the ice cream cone, but blacked out the background, now suddenly we have this great pink background right behind our ice cream cone. Now, some other fun things that you can do, because you can really play around with this color. So for example, you can hit the I key for the eyedropper selection. And say, for example, I wanted to try out maybe making it this orange. I would just tap on that orange color with the eyedropper and then hit G again for the paint bucket tool. Again, making sure we are selected on that layer, right? That solid color layer. And then I'd select here and it's now made it a comparable orange to the selection that I made on the subject. But I don't really dig this. And two, I wanna create just again, a nice little bit of contrast going on. We could absolutely come in here and grab the green and drop that in. Ooh, that's kind of fun. We can also come up here into the color area and say I'm like, oh, I do want it to be in that like neighborhood of that green, but I want it to be just a little bit lighter. We can drag this around. You can see how the eyedropper tool brought it into that specific green, but then I can just drag it a little lighter, maybe a little less saturated, put in the paint bucket tool, and it paints it that background color. But again, I really dug the pink. So let's go ahead and select our pink. We can see that's really up in the reds range. And then I could go ahead and just drop that straight in, but that feels a little too overpowering for our subject. I really want some nice contrast, make this a little less vibrant in terms of that background so that the subject really pops. This is also where color theory, you can really just spend some time playing around with mixing and matching different colors and just see how it changes the look of your ice cream cone, your subject. It's really interesting how colors interact with one another to create a certain look. So you can see though that I'm just gonna drag this to less saturated, a little bit brighter. You can see I'm here on that solid color layer. And then again, the G, the paint bucket tool. Drop that in, oh, it's a little too light. I wanted something with just a little bit more punch. There we go. I love the contrast that that creates. It's got kind of that bubblegum kid feeling, super fun. So now all I have to do is if I am ready to take this back over into Capture One, just hit Control S to take it back over into Capture One to save that file. And then from there, I can export it and share it wherever I'm planning to put it. 
So thanks so much for joining me here in the studio. If you want to see more of this style of video where we're kind of going start to finish and talking through the setup and everything, let me know. Always looking for your input. You give me the best ideas here on the channel. So thanks again as always for hanging out. I hope you have a fantastic day. You stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon. All right. Bye.